Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on this video. Today I want to take a look at Linux Mint Debian Edition. We've looked at this before on this channel but it's been quite a while. And with all the brouhaha going on about Linux Mint 18 and whether you want to stay with 17.3 or take a bite out of Linux Mint 18, that's a decision that people are making. People coming to Linux Mint right now, well do I put Linux Mint 17.3 on the machine? Do I put Linux Mint 18? Which one do I do? All these questions are being asked. Well, I just wanted to point out that there is a third alternative uh, when you're dealing with the Linux Mint world, and that's Linux Mint Debian. The tech press has gone crazy over Linux Mint 18. There are articles out there saying that Linux Mint 18 is the best Linux ever. And I think that's kind of interesting that they're saying that. And it is getting a lot of attention in media outlets that ordinarily do not talk much about Linux, which I think is a good thing because that makes people aware of Linux that ordinarily wouldn't be. But whether it is the best Linux distribution ever, it's completely up for debate. Linux Mint 18 is based on Ubuntu 16.04. Ubuntu 16.04 has some bugaboos in it, like there are no proprietary drivers for people with AMD graphics and we had problems with Flickr and things like that on certain laptops and we also had issues with uh, the network manager applet. Linux Mint has smoothed out a lot of those bumps but I'm still a little wary of installing Linux Mint 18 on hardware at this point. However, yesterday I used Linux Mint Debian Edition to demonstrate AppImage which is a universal package distribution system for Linux so that allows software to run pretty much on anything and with that tool in your back pocket you can run Linux Mint Debian and have your cake and eat it too so that's why I'm taking another look at it as well Linux Mint Debian of course would not be for everybody but hey it might be for you so let's take a look at it here to find out about it go to downloads and just hover over it and then you'll see LMDE2 show up and then we can go to that page and we can take a quick look at that here zoom this in make it easier for everybody to see including myself and here they explain a little bit about what it is and you can read the release notes and you can learn more about Linux Mint Debian in a nutshell it is based on Debian Jesse they have had a Debian based version of Linux Mint out there since 2010 I remember installing uh, LMDE1. I ran that for a long, long time, and then they kind of did an update and went to LMDE2. And this is a semi rolling release. They say it's a rolling release, but I don't know what's going to happen when LMDE3 comes along. You may have to reinstall, and of course, that goes along with the Debian release cycle, which is a little bit different from other people, uh, other distributions in the Linux world, because they can go years before they release another Debian. This one is based on Jesse. Okay, and that's kind of great because if you go ahead and install this and you can use it, you can run it, you're not going to have to worry about every six or eight months going from like 18 to 18.1 or 17.2 to 17.3 like we've been doing since the release of Linux Mint 17. No, this will be pretty much a rolling release and uh, you'll get more updated packages. Kinda sorta, gang. We'll talk about that in just a minute. You can download the Cinnamon version or you can download the Mate version and then they have 32-bit and 64-bit versions available to you. So that's pretty much all you need to know. You can come here and read about the release notes. So let's actually look at the distribution itself. I have it running here in a virtual machine and I've got the uh, system info up here and it's telling us that we are on LMDE2. It is the Cinnamon 64-bit edition. And we're running 3.0.6. That is the version of the Cinnamon desktop, which is pretty close to the latest. And uh, let's see here. We are on kernel 3.16, and that's it. That's your only choice. There are no other kernels in the repositories. That's a Debian thing. Debian picks a kernel and sticks with it. Now, how you would manually upgrade that or whether that would even be possible, I have no idea because I'm not that good at Debian. But 3.16 is an okay kernel. There are some problems in virtual machines, though. We may see a couple of glitches on the screen because of that. saw that yesterday when I was using uh, this in a virtual machine running in a live environment. 
and uh, we have two cores of the i5 processor. I've given it a gigabyte of memory and it has a 32 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, so that's pretty much what you're looking at here and that's what it looks like. One of the interesting things that I like about the way uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition works is that they have a slightly different installer. Of course it's the Debian installer and when it comes up time to partition the disk okay so I'm gonna do cat and we're gonna look at etc fs and I'm going to just click tab to autofill that we're gonna open up that file and take a look at it and this of course is the drives that are the partitions that are mounted on the system you see something interesting here I chose the automatic option I did not manually partition this drive and what I really like about it is that it puts the swap file up front on the drive and then it creates a big partition to put the slash or root partition in of course the home partition is included there uh, you'll have to manually partition if you want to have a different you know root partition and home partition but it puts the swap up front if you choose the automatic option in Ubuntu then it creates this great big partition it puts the system partition as the first partition on the disk and then it creates a logical partition and sticks swap all the way at the end it works but the downside of doing that is that whatever size that drive is you're locked into it so in this instance I can take this virtual drive which is only you know 32 gigabytes I could clone that and then I could clone this onto a physical drive and then boot it up in a real machine I can resize this it makes it a lot easier if you're moving things around and while it is for many reasons uh, kinda nice to have your home partition in a separate folder or a separate partition the home folder in a separate partition that's what I'm trying to say it's not mandatory and if you're just starting out with Linux this is really the best way to go because later on if you want to clone this you want to move it into another machine you want to upgrade your hard drive there you go it makes it easy to do that so that's one of the things I really like about the way Debian installs so we can go ahead and close the terminal here and the next thing that I want to look at is the software look at software sources because this is different than it is in the regular edition of Linux Mint we have the mirrors for the Linux Mint repositories they're pretty much the same but when we get down here to the Debian repositories uh, we're not we're looking at different mirrors so uh, it's not exactly the the same mirrors that we see for Ubuntu of course that makes perfect sense and you'll notice here that we do not have the tool that lets you manage PPAs because as of right now Debian does not support private package archives. I heard some rumblings a while back that Debian may support private package archives at some point. Uh, that's something that they were talking about, but they don't do that. That's an Ubuntu thing, and that allows developers to distribute their software without having to put it into the main repositories. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same here. And if we go and take a look at the update manager, you'll find that that's pretty much the same the settings are a little bit different and uh, if we go to view we do not have the kernel tool because we don't really get to change kernels with uh, this particular operating system so it's kinda weird it's semi rolling but yet it's uh, it's built for stability too so they don't even give you the option to change kernels and let's take a look here at software manager and you'll notice that it is not asking me for uh, it's not prompting me for a password to give it administrator privileges that's because Debian uh, the first time that you do that when you open up a session it will a little window will come up and it'll say okay I'm gonna remember this for the rest of the time that you're logged in unless you tell me not to and so after that uh, anytime that you do anything it doesn't prompt you it does put up a message that tells you that it's doing that unless you tell that uh, the system that the message that you don't want it which I've already done I've told it I don't really need to be reminded okay so there are a couple of downsides here now if I do a search here for Spotify let's do a search for that 
you see that we have a Spotify client available for Debian. That's cool. Uh, by the way, that Debian package, if you download that directly from the Debian repositories, it works on Ubuntu. I found that out. So some of the packages in Debian work on Ubuntu, and some of the Ubuntu packages work in Debian. It's just uh, kind of crazy, you know. Not everything does. Okay, what else did I want to look for? I wanted to look for Skype to show you that it is not available here. It's available on Linux Mint, but it's not available here. Or Linux Mint uh, based on Ubuntu, because that comes from the Ubuntu archive. So Debian doesn't have Skype in there. They have a bunch of different Skype alternatives. If you want the real deal, you're going to have to go get the app image of Skype, or that's how it's going to be. So if I was going to run this as my daily driver, I would have to do that. Uh, also, even though this is a rolling release, I was kind of uh, surprised to see that LibreOffice, we get like version 4 of LibreOffice. This isn't version 5. Version 5 is available in Linux Mint 17.3, but they haven't rolled that into the Debian edition. So maybe that's another thing that you would install from an app image is go get LibreOffice 5 and that way you could have the latest LibreOffice or you could just use LibreOffice 4. So there's a few packages that I've come across here that are that are kind of a, a little bit on the crusty side and have been around for a while but they're stable which is kind of the point of having those packages okay and we do have the latest cinnamon desktop and the experience running in this virtual machine is that this is very peppy and it is uh, let's see what it's doing with the memory here Okay, let's see what it's doing with the system. I've already been fooling around with it a little bit. See, we're only using 333 megabytes of memory. And I've been fooling around with this for a while, which for a cinnamon desktop is pretty light. This is very lean. So this is a, a, a very fast, very peppy system. Yeah, I'll go ahead and close the terminal. I don't care. And uh, let's see, what else do I need to tell you? If you do install this and you want to play with it, install the system and then the very first thing you do before you touch anything else is run the updates. Because since this is a rolling release, the image that is up on the Linux Mint site at this point is kind of old. So there are a lot of packages to install it swaps out the entire desktop so what you will want to do is as soon as the system boots up then you will want to make sure that you uh, first go here and go to choose some choose your mirrors if it says that the mirror doesn't work choose another one because I did run into that and then you're going to want to refresh this the first thing that will be installed is mint update it'll give you a fresh version of that and then it will go back and then it will list all of the other updates. It will install that batch of updates. And then when that's done, it will install more updates. <laughs> so it takes a while to get the system up to date. And while that is doing that, don't do anything to the desktop because it's going to swap out the entire desktop. You're going to get a new version of Cinnamon and things will become unstable. And when that's done, uh, restart the system. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're, you're, you're having this thing update and then you're over here playing with settings and whatnot, uh, it very well could just crash on you. Uh, so that is one thing to definitely keep in mind as you uh, get started with Linux Mint Debian. But once it's all updated and everything is running, I'm surprised at how stable it is and how well it works. And like I said, this might be a candidate for some hardware somewhere down the road. Or, you know, I put my mom on Linux Mint 17.3, and she's pretty happy with it, but I don't see any reason why she couldn't be on Linux Mint Debian and maybe have a, things be a little bit more up-to-date other than the kernel. So there you go, gang. That's a look at LMDE2 Betsy. Linux Mint Debian. I think I've pretty much said everything about it that I need to say. Definitely an alternative to Linux Mint 17.3 or Linux Mint 18 at this point. And you can check everything 
out about it here on the website under LMDE2. You can also find it on the All Versions page where they have every currently supported version of Linux Mint available to you. And you can play around with different versions of Linux Mint there if you want to as well. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. And be sure to check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. Give that a like. Check out FreedomPenguin.com for interesting articles about Linux from contributors such as myself. There's a lot of neat people that put up a lot of neat stuff there. Definitely worth bookmarking. And we will do this again very soon.